do something with me. Close your eyes for just one moment. And take a breath. And exhale. When you hear the word stuck, what comes up for you? What picture? What feeling? Where do you feel that in your body? Take one more breath in and exhale, open your eyes. I asked the very same questions to my community and the, in the answers were very interesting. Words like hopeless, frustrated, uncertain, like a lost kid on a funfair. Can you relate to any of those? I certainly can. It is fascinating that no matter what path I take or no matter what decision I make in my life, I end up feeling frozen, <laughs> like a deer caught in headlights, unable to move forward, overwhelmed by fear and uncertainty. Now, after having worked with hundreds and hundreds of people with different backgrounds and, and uh, with different cultures at different stages in their lives, I came to realize that this feeling of stagnation is something that everyone experiences. It's a reoccurring pattern in all of our lives. And so let's just relax for a moment. You, I, we are not alone in this journey. But why is it that we're associating these moments and these feelings with something negative as a crisis? After having, or analyzing rather, hundreds of coaching sessions, I realized that there are three patterns that continue to pop up like a persistent melody. Pattern number one, living your life based on outside expectations versus internal desires. Pattern number two, the inability or struggling to regulate yourself and your emotions. And pattern number three, pulling away from meaningful connections with others. These patterns they leave us with an internal conflict. Self-doubt arises, and we're unable to move forward or make a decision, creating that feeling of stagnation. Some people even refer to it as an identity crisis. Now, you want to know a secret. These moments or phases as an identity crisis, they are not unavoidable. You, can, you cannot not have them. They are part of our life. Essentially, they are meant for us to experience. So the key is not to avoid them. The key is learning how to navigate through them. In my early adulthood, I had no clue how to do that. Heck, no one teaches us these things. That left me feeling hopeless over and over again, leading to one phase of burnout and depression after the other. But now, Armed with my own wisdom and the wisdom from the people that I've been working with, I'm here today to share with you a simple three-step process that you can take with you after today and that will help you to sail through these challenging moments with more calmness, ease, cultivating self-trust and empowerment along the way. I call it the connected method. Very simple, yet very powerful. In the connected method, you're connecting to three core life dots. Let's get into them. Life dot number one, connect to your heartbeat. You see, after my bachelor's at age 22, I had a brilliant idea. Let's move to Dubai. I bought a one-way ticket, and I landed on Dubai's vibrant airport, ready to conquer the world. Little did I know that this experience would shape me in ways I never expected. At that time, I took on an internship that paid 400 euros, and I was on the quest to get a full-time job that matches more my experience, my background. I sent out 242 CVs, which gave me, uh, at the end, three interviews. Kind of promising, right? Well, imagine me in a glass-walled meeting room facing a panel of interviews, interviewers. Interview horror story. I stuck. I froze like a popsicle in the freezer leg. And after an agonizing 90 minutes, the, the hiring manager dropped his pen on the table. He looked at me and he said, Claudia, that was very disappointing. 
please do not expect to hear back from us. Oof, ouch. I left the shiny office building, tears streaming down my face, feeling defeated. What do I do now? A decision had to be made. So I bought another one-way ticket, this time back home to move in with my parents, with minus in my bank account, no clue what I'm going to do next, feeling like a failure. But hey, a couple of years fast forward, at age 28, I thought I had it all figured out. I was a data analytics manager uh, at the global tech company, and I was uh, leading a global team, rubbing shoulders with the executives. And at that time, I have been living in six different countries across four continents, earning promotion after promotion. Kind of successful, right? Family, friends would say that my life was picture perfect, but why do I feel like a failure still inside of me? Why is it that I still feel like a traveler lost in unknown territories without a map? There's the, here, here it is, the pattern that keeps coming up. Feeling stagnant, in, in the phases where we feel stagnant, self-doubt creeps up. In these moments, it's what happens is we question our identity. Who am I? Who am I if I'm not this person? It, le it leaves us feeling trapped in a roller coaster of self-doubt and soul-searching, not knowing what to do next. It's this internal battle between who we should be versus who we want to be. But here's the truth I wish I would have known earlier. You are not meant to be only one version of yourself. You are meant to evolve, to grow, to redefine yourself over and over again. For real, embrace this freedom to explore yourself without any judgment. Let this moment not be a moment of an identity crisis, but let, rather let this moment be a moment of an identity breakthrough. So here's what to do in step number one. Connect your heart. Put your, and you feel free to do it with me, to learn it. Take your both hands, put it on your chest, connect to your heartbeat, take in a breath, visualize it, connect with it, and in a silent moment, say to yourself, I am breaking through. Very good. What happens here is you get away from the racing mind and it grounds you in the, in the moment right here and it gives you permission to change. It gives you permission to be different. Life thought number two, connect to your younger you. You see, the younger you is a part of you that, that brings up fears from past situations, brings us fears of failure, making mistakes, of standing out. Even when I was preparing for this very talk, my 10-year-old self popped up, carrying the weight of a very seemingly insignificant moment from a school classroom. I was tasked to stand in front of my classmates and read a passage from a book. I read about a girl traveling across the sea to an island. And in a moment, I mispronounced, and instead of island, I said, Island. Classmates erupted in laughter, pointing at me, laughing at me, mocking me ever since then. You see, that moment is so small in the grand scheme of life, but it left the mark. And so as, as I was preparing for this talk here, she came up, because in that moment, I associated making mistakes with embarrassment, which leads to shame, kind of like I did just earlier in the talk when I, when I froze a little bit. Now, the point here really is that we all have these younger versions of ourselves that keep coming up, especially when we do something that is very uncomfortable. So the key here is not to push the younger version away. The key is to knowing how to reparent yourself, providing reassurance, guidance, and safety for that part. So what to do in step number two, to connect to your younger you? After, and feel free to do it with me again, after you connect with your heart and your heartbeat, give yourself a little squeeze. Connect with the younger version, visualize it, and in a silent moment, say to yourself, it's OK to make mistakes. This simple act here with that affirmation is giving the younger version what it needs, security. Life.number three, connect to others. 
Last year, I had a very interesting encounter on a two-hour flight. I was sitting next to an elderly man, and as the stewardess was passing by offering refreshments, the, uh, the, the man, he tapped on my shoulder, and he looked at me and said, what do you want? It's on me. Honestly, my first reaction, what a weirdo. This is, yeah, maybe you thought this too right now. But this is where I realized the real problem that I had, is that a, a stranger offering a kind gesture and starting conversation became something awkward rather than normal. So what happened to the times 10 years ago where this would be the, the natural part of our lives? Now, we started in that moment chatting. He introduced me to his wife, and I learned. I learned from his life wisdom and some lessons that really shaped me. But it was not only the conversation that shaped, shaped me, but it was the realization that in the moments where we feel most stagnant, these are also the moments where we are most disconnected from others. And it's also in these moments where we forget about the power of human connection. Now, I want you to take a look around the room for a moment. For real, don't be shy. Take a look around the room. Very good. Nice. <laughs> Great job. So according to a 2021 research done by Workplace Intelligence, partnered up with Oracle, they discovered that 76% of people are struggling with the feeling of stuckness at any given time in their life, in any area. What does this mean? That means that the majority here in this room are right now experiencing some sort of frustration, stagnation, uncertainty, maybe even an, an identity crisis. With this in mind, I challenge you, connect with each other. Connect, make eye contact with the barista that you go to every day and say, say their name. Say hello in the elevator when you enter in there. Or simply start a conversation on the next journey. And then, what to do? Step three in the connected method. After you connect with your heartbeat and your younger version, connect with others. And in a tiny, silent moment, say to yourself, I can make a difference. In summary, the connected method consists of th three steps. Let's practice them together. So first step, everyone, follow me, connect to your heartbeat and say, I am breaking through. Step two, squeeze yourself, connect to your younger version, and say, it's OK to make mistakes. And step number three, connect to others, and say, I can make a difference. Amazing. Do this every day. It takes you less than 30 seconds. What happens when you do that is that you don't push away these sensations or emotions of feeling stagnant, but instead, you actually allow yourself for 30 seconds during the day to, do, to be a human being rather than a human doing. And so take them with you, experiment, and see how they will allow, how they will allow you to navigate through these moments with more ease and calmness. Now, imagine, imagine a world where we celebrate ourselves for the ups and the downs, and where we actually reconnect the dot from feeling stuck as a sign of a crisis to a new dot where feeling stuck is a sign of a breakthrough. So, another challenge for you. The next time you meet your friends, colleagues, or family members, instead of saying, hey, how are you? Ask them, what are you stuck with right now? Thank you. <laughs>